I'm gonna call it my favorite place in the country. It's actually looking really different than I've ever seen it. Oh, man, this end is so hot. Welcome back to another episode everyone. In this one, I am at, I'm gonna call it my favorite place in the country, the world, even the universe. It is just, I don't know, hands down the best. I always have a great time here. Uh, Gary, AKA Fraser Island. Now, uh, you'll notice I've got no passengers with me. Uh, a little bit different this trip. I'll tell you more about that later on, but we're cruising up the beach. We've had an early start today because of the tides. And if you've uh, been paying attention to the footage, you'll notice I've got the boat in tow. We've actually got four cars in this convoy and um, we're all towing. So this is a really different trip to Fraser for me. Normally we're just up here with the car and the tent. So on the trip with me this time, I've got some good mates and their families. Uh, up the very front in the big Y62, we've got Clayton and Talia with their kids, real little adventures. They are towing their tinny. We've then got Michael and Sophie with their kids in the uh, big 200 series Land Cruiser, the big V8. They're towing their camper trailer. Uh, behind them, we've got James and Rach and their kids. And they've got, I'm not gonna call it a tinny because it's a little bit bigger than that, but they've got their boat with them. And then we've got me at the back in the Ranger, towing the three and a half meter titty. Now I've got it on the uh, fold up car trailer. So this is the first time I've actually taken this on a proper trip. It's got wheels that look like they're off a wheelbarrow, um, but it seems to be going all right in the sand so far. And really it's so light, it's just dragging behind me. So be interesting to see how that one goes. But uh, the plan is right now, we're just punching up as uh, high as we can up the island. We're gonna camp on the east side today. And uh, we're gonna try to see a few things along the way. It's just tide dependent. So we're trying to make it to Eli Creek and hopefully it's all good because we've seen some photos recently and on the high tide mark, it's nearly uh, impassable. So we're gonna crack along, see how we go. Now you might be wondering, why is our rooftop tinny not on the roof of the car? And it's simply because I have not had time to set it up yet. Uh, I don't have a winch. The canopy now is higher than last setup. And I just, being on my own, even though I've got mates here, I just don't want to be lifted it on and off. So trailer's there, I thought, why not? It's a little bit different, everyone else is towing. So that's why. <laughs> I got myself a co-pilot now. Everyone meet Zach. Hello. <laughs> so he was just saying he was uh, he's always wanted to be in a YouTube video. So here you go, mate. You're on one. Yay. <laughs> so Zach uh, is Mick and So's boy, and it's just they got the five of them in the cruiser. So to free up a bit of space, he's jumped in with me. Be my co-pilot, someone to talk to. All right. First stop is the magical Eli Creek. Got a beer already. This place has to be probably one of the best parts of Fraser. It, it's hit and miss though, if you have bad weather, it's just a horrible spot, but we've got beautiful skies today, low wind, that's what you want. But um, it's actually looking really different than I've ever seen it, because normally, uh, we'll put up some drone footage, normally the water runs out on the other side, but it's fully changed since last time we've been here. But um, yeah, 
just blow up some inflatables and, and uh, float on down. It's just awesome. It's the best. There's a 100 metre boardwalk to the end of the usable part of the creek, then you jump on in and float on back down to the cars. Eli Creek begins high in Gary Sand Dunes and it moves around 80 million litres of fresh water out to the sea every day. All right, we're gonna keep moving now. Eli Creek is bloody amazing, but just back there, when the tide comes in, it's now getting pretty hard to cross. So we're not gonna push it, we're gonna get through and um, head on up towards, I think Wadi Point, go to Orchid Beach and then um, make our way onwards to where we're gonna camp. Not a Fraser trip without stopping at the Mahino. Seen this heaps of times, but you just always got to pull over and check it out again. I tell you what, there's less and less every time. The Mahino started life as an ocean liner and operated from 1905 until 1935. With the start of World War I, she was then converted into a hospital ship to be used in Europe. In 1935, she was sold to Japan for scrap and on its journey there, she broke rope during a cyclone and ended up where she lays today. through Indian head up and Mick's already stuck <laughs> are you stuck Mick or is James stuck James is stuck I think yeah James is stuck all right I'm gonna back up to give everyone heaps of space and we'll try that again yeah. you good um, do you want to drop this boat off and come back yeah, is there anyone coming the other way? Can I try to shoot around so I can dump, come dump the boat too? Yeah, you can shoot around. There's no one in front of me. Copy, coming around. All right, let's do this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How you liking this sack? Real good. <laughs> uh, that's the problem. The other guys, like James's boat is full and the camper trailer is heavy. It's surprising how heavy that is for a little camper trailer. <laughs> uh, hopefully nothing's flying out of the tinny. Yeah. <laughs> goes to show that wheelbarrows have powers. <laughs> the wheelbarrow. What do you think of that, buddy? Was that fun? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so two of us are through, the Y62 and, um, and us, but we're gonna have to go back and help these other guys, they're stuck. It's all happening. Clayto's got his boat off, he's running back. I can't get the bloody trailer off. It's all good, Zachy. I think all the bouncing around I don't know, it's just stuck on that tow ball, so I'm gonna have to get some gear out and try to get it off. Because I think we're already um, causing a bit of a queue, blocking a few people. There's some excitement. Yeah. Oh. Can't get that off. Why? 
flea market and look there. Fingers crossed the swings. There hey. we go. All right. We're in action. Let's go get them. All right, we're going to rip up, see what's happening. Are you guys both still stuck? <laughs> okay, cool. I'm on my way back now. That V8 sounds good. So we're going to drop down even more. We've all been running sort of that 20 PSI, which is normally fine, but I, when you're just trying to get out of a situation like this, we're just going to smack it straight down to like 15 on. Just like that, I'm stuck too. And now I think someone's pulled up to see if Mick was all right and he stuck himself in a cruiser. <laughs> Come over here, Zaki. Yeah. Uh, just this bit here is soft as buggery. All right, we're going to get the patrol in front of the cruiser now. Yeah. Ford, train, and Lincoln. All attached together. So the camper and cruise has gone down again. Yeah. <laughs> to. It's all right, we're halfway there now. We should be right. <laughs> What'd you do, mate? You had it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like people trying to turn them out. Oh, that V8's down. You like the V8s, do you, Zach? All right, mate, let's jump in. They're good. Oh, man, this end is so hot. First dingo of the day. Yeah. We've got a bit of a lineup ahead of us. This is very, very common between, uh, where are we? Between Indian Head and Orchid yeah. Beach. It's not like, it's not the softest track, but people tow on big loads. It just, not enough clearance on trailers and stuff. They just, they just sink down. So who knows how many ahead there is and how long we got to wait for. But it's all good. Cause I've got my lunch in the pie oven. Oh man, my feet are burning. Let's have a look. <sighs> <sighs> that is so hot. Man, everything has moved so much in this canopy. Oh, God. Better check my eggs, eh? Oh man, how are your feet? Oh, it's so hot, eh? You're kidding me. Still good. The eggs are good. But I lost four or five beers. Uh, oh. What's happened? Oh man! Oh, My no. has like destroyed itself. Oh. <laughs> Are your okay? Oh, one one is fully split open. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> mm. oh. A few fallen soldiers can't help that. Oh, have me lunch while we wait. <laughs> Everything's hot. So old mate just came and told me there's a big boat stuck down there. Air and a half have been stuck, so it's all part of it. 
you come to Fraser, you can't get upset about this stuff. Well, we got lucky then. We only had to wait like five minutes. I smashed my sausage roll and we're back on. So I don't think we're too far from Orchid Beach now. So we'll stop in there. That's sort of, um, if you haven't been to Fraser, that's your shop that has fuel. It's a pub, it has food and stuff. It is pricey, but you've got to think of where it is, the cost of them to get everything there. But it's, um, it's good because if you run out of stuff or you need fuel, that's, that's your go-to. And, so. and doesn't it have stickers where it says, oh, I got Bob that... Um, Orchid Beach? Orchid Beach, It does, yeah. mate. Hopefully I don't need one of those stickers. Yeah. How good does that look? So this is just on the northern side of Orchid Beach. So we're pretty much there. We're camping zone eight. So we're just gonna rip up here till we see the sign that says zone eight and um, pick a spot. Hopefully it's not too busy up here. You obviously get less crowds because it's harder to get this far up. Yeah, let's head up there. Right, oh guys, this is camp for the next couple of nights, and this is my setup for when I'm away from the family and kids, which uh, I should actually let you know now why they aren't here. Uh, it's simply because the way we're traveling now, we are getting an exemption from school for the kids. So because we just went out west and spent um, a bit of time out there, they now have to go back into school so um, yeah, Erin's staying at home while the kids go back to school. And uh, I took the opportunity to come out here with some mates and their families. Anyway, it's just something a little bit different. I have to say it's probably been about three years since I've done any kind of stint away from the family because we've literally lived on top of each other. So, uh, so we'll see how we go. Week away without them. See how I feel by the end of it. But anyway, this is the setup. So. Obviously, we've been caravanning for the last three or two and a half years. Uh, I didn't have anything to get away in apart from a caravan. So, went out to a uh, four-wheel drive super centre and I got myself the good old um, Big Daddy Deluxe King's Swag. Now, that was only 150 bucks with the bag. I know they're not the best quality. I know there's heaps of other better ones, but for 150 bucks, this gets me out there. Uh, plenty of room in it too. She's massive. Just got it opened up. Just airing out a little bit. Should be right. I slept in it the other night with the kids and it was actually quite comfy. Uh, although a little bit hard with two kids in there too. Didn't have much room to sprawl out. But this is also why we did the um, canopy setup so we could start doing trips like this. So got it set up there, ready to cook, induction cooker. That'll do me dinner tonight. Just got some snags out. That's gonna be nice and easy, just in a fry pan. Might do some taters or something with it, I don't know. But this is it, this is cool. Um, I've camped up here a few times before, and it's such a good spot. You got Orchid Beach right there, you got Nagala Rocks just up the road. Awesome spot. Anyway, I'm gonna put the camera down for tonight because everyone's getting a little bit of first night fever. I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit of a big one. Even though everyone is quite buggered after the boggings today. But um, yeah, talk to you in the morning.